Thanks for joining me for the Warftail Pro DSP Controller Software Overview. From your Windows application screen, double click on the DSP Controller icon. The DSP Controller window launches and is followed by the main application window. If your amplifier is already connected, it will appear in the list as you see here. If not, click on Virtual Device at the bottom left to simulate a setup and select your amp from the options in the drop-down menu. Once selected, click Add to add the amplifier in, and then click the X at the top right to return to the main application screen. If already connected and your device doesn't appear here, click the Refresh button. Down at the bottom of the window along with Virtual Devices, you'll find General, which displays information about your amplifiers when clicked, Groups, that allows you to group channels and amplifiers together by control, refresh, and delete. DSP controller is compatible with the DP4035, 4065, 4100, and 2200 N and F versions of the amplifiers. Now let's double click on the DP4100F amplifier to access the control panel. The tabs to the left hand side are labeled Main, Input, Output, and Preset. This menu will look slightly different with the N versions showing the Dante tab off to the left hand side as well. In this example, we're just going to show the non-Dante versions. Dante will be covered in another video. At the top of the window, you can click on the amplifier name to rename it. Also at the top right, you'll find the Find, Status, Display Lock, and Standby options. The main section tab includes on the left hand side, the Master Volume Controls with volume and gain along with sensitivity and voltage and DBFS displayed. In the middle section, you'll have channels one through four source meters. And finally, all the way to the right, you'll have the output meters for channels A through D. And below those meters, you'll find mute, current draw, temperature in Celsius, and finally, channel status. Next, we're gonna click on the input tab. Source options for inputs one through four Analog, AES EBU, and Dante for the N versions of the amplifiers. There's also a backup option which can be accessed by clicking on Set. Once you've clicked on Set, you can go over to the far right where it says Backup, and you can select Analog or AES EBU in this case as the primary and backup. Now I'm going to click on AES EBU, and that switches with Analog. Your threshold for that switch is also right here. Clicking on the speaker icon mutes the input selected. Clicking on delay allows you to set it in milliseconds, meters, and feet. Clicking on EQ brings up the EQ window. Each EQ can be accessed through the EQ buttons at the top of the EQ window, and each channel has a high pass, a low pass, and eight parametric EQ. You can also click on phase at the top right corner of the screen. If you select an EQ that you want to use somewhere else, you can click on the copy option, then go to that, that EQ and you can paste it in. You may also save EQ curves here or open existing ones from your own library. Once closed, you can click on the multiband icon. Again, all four channels are represented here with the switching between channels using the one through four buttons and then click X when done. To the right hand side, Use the compressor or limiter with visual controls. Again, this is something that can be copied and pasted between channels. You'll find four bands in addition to the selectors at the top left for the four multiband amplifier channels. Sliding over to the matrix display, we can select which input channel will match up with an output channel or mix them together as needed. As an example, I may want to share input one with output one and two. Now let's move to the output tab. This shows our input section to the left and then moving to the output section. This shows our input or user definable section to the left. And then starting in the output section with FIR filter on or off, EQ. Again, this is a high pass, low pass EQ with eight bands of parametric per channel. Trim with plus and minus 18 dB maximum delay in milliseconds, meters, and feet, polarity, limiters with RMS and peak, threshold, attack, and release, along with auto can also be found on this screen per channel. 
When you click on mode, it allows you to choose between low Z, bridged low Z, 70 volt, bridge 70 volt, or bridged 100 volt. Then the noise gate, either being on or off with a preset threshold, output channel mute, and that moves us on to the preset tab. Device presets are used to store recall configurations between amplifier and PC. Clicking on speaker config brings up all four channels of this particular amplifier. I can select a channel and import a speaker setting from the library stored on the computer. You can find those libraries on the Wharfdale Pro website. Going back to the main page, that concludes this overview of the DSP controller from Wharfdale Pro. Check out more videos from Wharfdale Pro on this and other social media feeds. We'll see you soon.